so I guess that everybody of you are interested in this new competition with uh, quite a lot, a big number of uh, places or spots. In total, 555, if I remember correctly, I think. It was 350 from ADs and 205 for AST. So a very nice opportunity for all of those of you who are professionals on the ICT sector, right? Mm -hmm. so, okay. Let's see. I don't want to stay much longer, so I will begin now and the others could join later. Just a small reminder, the session will be recorded, so we will upload uh, it later on our YouTube channel. So, so you can recapitulate, review, um, see the whole of it again. Those of, the, those of you who miss it, well, you got that opportunity, but the advantage for those of you who are uh, sharing with us today the session is that you got the opportunity of questions and get an answer to them at the end of the session when we will open the micros to, to that part. So thank you. Uh, well, maybe I will present myself first. My name is Nico Cruz. I'm, I'm part of the Jasemos Europeos team. And I will be your guide today through the talent screener and the overall application of the ICT competition. Also another disclaimer, I will refer as the ICT competition to the overall of it, to both the AST and AD profiles. In fact, we will see that there's not much difference between one and another. I will try to point you out the different elements that they got, but in the end they are quite similar. And also you are entitled to present your application to both of them, to the AD and the AST. While you are not entitled to, uh, to candidate yourselves to two profiles on AD, you are entitled to candidate to AD and AST. So let's have that thing clear. Okay, so let's move on. Well, let's unlock our access to the assessment, right? Because what we will see today is that the talent screener, the application in general, are key now to get or pass to the assessment. And in the past, in the former competitions, we used to have the CVT, a middle test, just to sort out the candidates. But now this is not the case. Now what uh, is really relevant is our application. No matter how, how many years of working experience you, get, you have, no matter if you are the biggest expert in data protection or in, in data security or, or analysis, IT analysis, whatever, it doesn't matter. What matters is what you will write down in your application and how you reflect all that fantastic experience that you got on the paper. That's what is really important. Otherwise, we cannot access to, to the assessment, we cannot get through. And we will see why, why we are saying these things. Well, well, let's move on. How are we going to do it? First, analyzing why does it matter? Second, what to answer? The CV, the elements that we need to put in the CV. And a different part will be the talent screener. Please pay attention. We are talking about the CV, one side, that is uh, fulfilled in the 24 official languages, while the talent screener is in language two. So we need to be careful with that part. And how to answer. Some elements, some types, uh, some hints uh, to help you on that fulfillment. Okay, we still have time. If I remember correctly, your deadline is the 22nd of March, noon, noon in the morning, to deliver the, uh, your application. So still you have 20 days, more than enough to do it. Okay, let's move on. So let's recapitulate the most common fears and mistakes. If you have followed one of our previous uh, webinars, we already explained them and we keep insisting because they are, they are quite resilient with fears and mistakes. I mean, candidates tend to fall in the, into their hands, into their traps once uh, and again. So we need to avoid them. We need to protect ourselves from them. First of all, don't fear your CV. Don't think that you don't have enough experience. And you have the six, nine years that they are asking with three years in the relevant domain. That's the minimum requirement. So you got it. I mean, it's already quite a exigent demand. So don't think that others will present double times or double experience than yours. 
Um, second to many candidates, we will see there are, there are not so many candidates uh, called, really called to this competition. That is too complicated. No, it's not complicated, but it requires time. It requires careful reading of the notice of competition, careful reading of our, our application before we deliver it to avoid silly mistakes. Those are the relevant mom moments and relevant actions that are in our hands. So complicated, not at all, but exigent, de demanding. So how in the sense that we need to be constant, we need to be there all the time. Procrastination. I told you, we still got 20 days before we deliver or, or we got 20 days to deliver our application. Please don't leave it for the day before. Oh, I forgot to send my application. I will write it now and that's it. A couple of hours and I'm done. That's tricky and probably it's the perfect recipe for a failure just to get uh, eliminated or disqualify in the next steps of the process. So please start from now till the 19th and in the 19th you deliver your application. Don't leave it for the 20th because sometimes computers tend to block uh, or uh, apps or servers tend to block because of the amount of candidates. That hope is clear and let's move on now to the next one. So um, this is a mathematical formula that allows us to show you that at the end, it's very simple. So you take your application seriously, you dedicate time, attention, uh, tenderness, uh, you watch over your application seriously. And remember, you are as good as your explanation is. I told you before, and I'm telling you now, it's not a question of having 30 years of working experience. It's not a question of having 20 years. It's a question of that if you fulfill the criteria, nine, six years with three years in the uh, profile, I mean, it can be more than enough if you know how to explain it. If you deliver a good explanation of that profile. And on the contrary, even if you got 30 years of experience, if you don't explain yourself, if you just put a mess on your application, you will be disqualified. And you say, no, but I got 20 years of experience. Yes, but you didn't explain such thing. It was completely messy. I couldn't, I, theoretical evaluator, I couldn't read that part on your application, so you are out. And if we are out, there is no turning point. We cannot get back. So you fulfill these two criteria, then you end in the assessment center. As simple as that. But what else? I told you that I will offer you some justification on why the, this application matters, why this uh, element is relevant. So let, let me prove it. I mean, I don't need to invent anything. I just need to check the numbers from EPSO to prove that point. I took two different competitions. Uh, in 2016, there was a, no, the same competition that you're having now uh, for experts, for 87 experts in different profiles. It was up to six profiles. It was a few more. This time they merged the, the profiles. In one of the profiles that there was that analyst, uh, analyst was profile number three, if I remember correctly. At that time, uh, there were 852 candidates, at least those who fulfilled the application. Fine, it's fine. Um, after the checking the legibility criteria, uh, anything else, only half of them, for 460, get, uh, got into the assessment. You see, so already by just doing your application, half of the candidates got disqualified. They didn't fulfill the criteria to get into the talent screener, uh, that's important. And then from the talent screener, only 88, one out of five got into the assessment. So they evaluate all the talents, they gave marks and only 88 from 460 got into the assessment center. And from there, 31 got into the reserve list. That's important because I mean, uh, I. I'm sure I didn't met all the candidates this at the time, but I'm sure that uh, not all got 20, 30 years of experience. Maybe they got uh, nine, 10 years of experience, more or less the minimum required by the, the notice, but they did the, the homework. They provide a good explanation in their application. They provide the good indications and they answer all the questions the best they could. So that was the key element to for the performance in the assessment in the steps previous to the assessment center, right? So that's how they move from the talent to the assessment. They got the invitation. So that's why it's important. 
In other profile, in other competition, for instance, what we got was the AST 2020 assistance. It was also several profiles, but it was for temporary agents, not for officers, but still same content, IT stuff. Uh, and in this case, there were 382 candidates. Again, it was for the profile data analyst. Uh, who went for the initial screening and then of, from them only less than uh, a bit more than uh, twice or two times, a bit less than three times, that's why 2.5 times uh, um, uh, got into the talent screener. I mean, you see from 382, it got only 144 candidates who get, got into the assessment center. So important, uh, sorry, in the assessment, no, in the talent, in the talent screener. And from there, 49 got into the, um, into the assessment center. So you see how important it is to have a good application. Again, I insist, it's not a question about uh, the quantity of your experience. It's a question about the quality of your application. That it's, there's a direct proportionality between quality and your chances of getting into the assessment, provided you fulfill all the criteria. That's relevant. I mean, we cannot invent and we cannot create fake, uh, a fake profile or fake experience uh, for this. That's the, the single thing, but for the rest, it's just quality in your application, how we explain things. Uh, that's why, why it matters. Okay, but what else do we have? Okay, we see that uh, there's plenty of spots here. I mean, um, uh, five fields. In the case of ADs, that is the table on top. AST is the table below. Also, it helps us to see that there are four profiles that are exactly the same. In the case of field one, field two, field four, and field five of AD is the same as the AST, while the file three, IT and data governance, is the one that is not exactly uh, reflected within the AST profiles. Okay, so that's the single difference. So that's why during the presentation and we, when we go into detail into the assessment and the talent, we will deal with two at the, uh, the two fields at the same time. For the same profile, the two fields are practically equivalent. If you compare the two notices, you will see that. Uh, we will do for you during the presentation. Hmm. But what else do we have here? What, what other elements do we need to, to consider? It's considering the number of spots, your chances are quite good. I don't think that there are so many candidates around Europe who fulfill all the criteria. So you have seen that the numbers in previous competitions were ar around 800, 500, hundreds. Uh, somehow it will be the same this time. We are talking about hundreds per uh, profile. So when you go 71 spots or 49, 70, it's a quite, uh, quite good proportion just to begin with. So, hmm. Remember, we need to, uh, to have it quite clear in our minds. So to the assessment, we'll be invited three times the successful candidates sought in the assessment. The, um, that's important. When I mean the, in the assessment, I mean the spots available in the position as we saw in the previous tables. Um, it's, and before the assessment, it's very relevant, the application, the talent screener, you need to do it right because that's the same process for all. That's the way that EPSO has to treat all of you with the same chances, with the same opportunities and in the same manner. Because when they correct your talent, they don't know who are you. They just know whatever you wrote on your application. That's it. That's everything that they need. So, and everything you need to get it. So, hmm, let's move on. First element that is very, very important to know what to answer, to know what are the keywords, the phrases that I need to reflect in my application. Check the Annex 1, the duties. On its profile, they are described the different duties of the, of, the, uh, of the fields of its field. I mean, I copy here only the field one ICT infrastructure for both AD and AST. And we see that uh, they are quite similar in the sense of describing the different activities. There are a few differences, but please 
print them or put them on a screen one by one compared to them and you will see that the differences are quite minor. But there is one important thing. You see in point one in the AD5, uh, AD7 profile, you say design, architecture, in integration, implementation. Well, in, on the AST, they say assisting in design, implementation, operation, monitoring. So um, you see that the sense of the activities for AST are more assistance. Well, they are just honoring the A category that is assistant. Yes, if you are an engineer who's been working in this professional area for many years, you may have been part of projects where you were the leader, you were designing, you were um, integrating, you were implementing, and in other projects where you were assisting, right? Um, I think that there's not so much difference sometimes. It depends more on your position in the project more than the, the tasks that you perform. So we'll see that at the end, it's a principle of how we explain things, and that will be common in, uh, to all the explanations that we will need. The fact that while in the AD profile, we need to offer a role, of leadership role, now we, that we were controlling the situation, having the big picture, uh, overviewing the whole process. In the uh, AD profile, if we want to apply to that one, we need a more hands-on approach, more uh, a direct one that where we are assisting it makes no sense saying that I was uh, AST, or my application AST, I was leading the project, I was uh, designing, I was proposing, I was managing everything. You know, you were more or less assisting, you were doing supporting activities, technical ones, so that's why they require technical profiles, but it's a different approach. And that's the difference, uh, not the task, not the go the technical elements themselves, but the way we deal with them, that are the, the difference. Also, if you take the point one of the AST for, uh, profile, participation in project teams and activities, you see, participation in projects, not leading projects, not leading teams, not leading activities, no, they say participation. So that's the idea. Already the duties are transmitting us the ideas of the two different profiles. And that idea, that vocabulary, that assisting, helping, collaborating, contributing, those are the keywords for the AST. For AD will be more leading, managing, proposing, designing. More. Those are the big difference. In the core of the activities, there's not much. But words matters, in this case, a lot. This is a helpful notion of what we need to do in our application, but uh, what else do we have? We need to do uh, initial self-analysis. First, we need to check our own CV. Before we start filling in the application, before we start answering all the questions from the talent, we need to think on our CV and how it adapts to the reality of the duties, the ones that I just mentioned. Uh, to see if there is a match between, between them, if I see a reflection of my experience, of my work in those activities, in those duties. That's the first thing. Second, and most important, do you really want this job? I mean, that was your time. If you think I don't see myself working in Brussels or in Luxembourg, Mm, well, maybe this job is not for you. Most likely it's scenario that you will end working in the European institutions in Brussels or Luxembourg, two main sites uh, of the institutions. So although after in your, during your career, you may end uh, in another place, that's perfectly fine and possible, but still think about yourself, you're working in those cities. Um, do you know how is the work in the institutions? It's a public institution, so it has a very good things, but also, it's different from the private sector. So do we like those differences? Do we think that we can enjoy our life working in the institutions? I think so. It's a very nice job, but it's up to your taste. It's up to your liking. Do you want that? That's important. Just be honest with you. Don't waste time. Uh, otherwise. Um, another thing, skills and capacities. It needs a useful review for later stages. In the sense that during the application, you will be asked other questions regarding these skills and capacities that maybe you didn't get points for them. Maybe 
they don't they disregard this question in order to evaluate the whole of your application in a direct term but in an indirect term they these questions and these skills and capacities description may help the assessors to understand you better and also may uh, they will help you to understand better the process, what EPS is looking for. So all the questions, all the points and all the aspects in your application, whether it's the CV or it's the talent screener, they matter and they can help and combine to make a better application, to allow us a better understanding of the application. Hope this is clear. And uh, let's move on. Now, there are more things to see today. So, in the application, make it clear, being concise, it's good, but to a limit, as many inputs as possible, all the information that is relevant, um, some sort of details maybe are not needed, are necessary, but key information about your experience, your, the software, the hardware, or the technical development that you have performed, or your, your technical experience certifications, all these elements are relevant. So don't, don't be lazy. Please give as much detail as you can on relevant matters, on relevant information. So detail matters and matters positively. And unless you are giving a totally nonsense as input, the more input you deliver is positive and you will get more points and you will be a better evaluation rather than a negative one. I, again, insisting on the professional experience. Uh, also because you need to describe it. You need to convince yourself how to reflect that your work experience match what the experience they are looking for. Because imagine that you've been working in a IT profile with a, a certain name. Um, you think that the task, the content, content-wise, it matches one of the profiles offered here in this not just competition, in this competition. But by the name, they don't match. It's only that the name is different. The content is completely the same. But you, in your application, you just put the name of your job position and anything else. You don't provide any details of what you did. Then the assessor will check and say, okay, this guy has been working on this area of IT for 10 years, fine. But this title, does, it doesn't match whatever I got here. So, I mean, these are 10 years that comes for nothing. Crash, crash out. That would be a pity because we didn't give more details because we didn't adapt, we didn't inform about how our profile matches the criteria, the duties, and the aspect that they are looking for. Okay, so um, uh, remember that part. Remember it. Um, also remember that eventually your application can be accessed not only by the EPSO board to evaluate it, but also by the human resources services later on. It's it's important to take that into consideration, but eventually it's not so relevant because you can update, once you have passed the competition, you can update your CV and provide more information. But during the competition, no. It's once you have sent your application, it's frozen. You cannot touch it. You cannot add, correct anything. So check it more than twice, at least three times, four times, before sending or delivering the application. Let's be careful with that. But what else do we have? Okay. Mm -hmm. As I told you, the self-analysis, right? Check your experience and background. How do they match your interest to apply, uh, to apply your contribution to the EU? It's one of the questions that's regarding uh, this um, willingness, this motivation, right? To, to be part of the institutions. Uh, another question I usually you have is in what role you could best contribute? Assess your own strengths. It's always a nice question. Also, especially because you need to explain in a very short paragraph. Strengths outline two of your main achievements. That's, that's key. So, I mean, all these elements, think about them. Even if they are not part of the talent screener, even if they are not part of the, um, purely of the part of work experience, they are part of your application. They deserve attention and they deserve to be taken into consideration when you are writing them. Mm -hmm. And regarding the application itself, how does it look? I don't know if you, all of you already opened your profile to apply or you're still waiting 
after today's session to do it so. So you will find something like this, for instance. This is the typical thing. It's taken from another um, competition. That's why you say competition technicians. But it doesn't matter. I mean, it's basically the same menu. You will see that you select the languages. You can select language number one among the 24 uh, official languages, language number two, English or French, and the language for your application. The three of them could be different. In fact, language one and language two might be different, while language of your application could be the same as language one or the same as language two. Doesn't matter. Depending on the settings you put, the menu and the application will inform you about it. It will remind you. This is important because if you are saying that you are filling in your application in Hungarian, and you finally write it down in French, you will be disqualified because you are not being accurate in the information given. You are using a different language. So careful to check all these elements and to be accurate on that part. Remember that the talent screener is in language too. So usually English or French, but the rest of the application can be a different language. That's about how does it look, but what else? Then we got some other questions regard, uh, that they are more statistical than anything else regarding the uh, what did you hear about the, um, the competition if you are willing to be contacted by your national services in case you pass some part of the competition these are not this part is not taken into account uh, in your application and it's that is specifically set in the application in any case Check always all the parts of the application because they are. You see, the, you see these small parts where they put the. Um, uh, the, the <laughs> let me. These small symbols. This is information, right? So you can go there and check what that about, and they will inform you about if it's uh, taken into account or just for statistical purposes. There is a lot of information within the uh, the document itself okay let me see okay so because it's directly the language number one they are uh, they limited the, that option antonio is commenting that they you don't have the option to select the language uh, of the application it's uh, considered language number one uh, but what the only uh, change means that it makes things easier for all of you um, it's clear and saving you the possibility of making mistakes. So fine. Um, mm -hmm. What to answer? So remember, elements to take into account when addressing the application. The CV part, the curriculum part, is not your talent screener. These are two different parts. So whatever you write in the CV, uh, explain your experience in the talent, you may have to repeat again all of, all, all of it once again, or to explain using a different approach, perhaps depends on the question, depends on the content. So treat both of the parts of the application as different documents, completely different. So um, remember for the AD, you need six years of relevant experience or nine and three in both cases, uh, three of them in the area of profile chosen, one of the five profiles for ADs and six years if you have studied a, a degree of four years, nine years if it's a degree of three years. It's for AST, you need six years of relevant experience or seven, depends on the length of your studies, and three or four of them in the area of the profile chosen. Simple, no, not a big deal, but again, check carefully that you fu uh, fulfill this criteria. Then remember, if it's not a full match, imagine that you've been working half a uh, half day on the profile chosen let's say in ICT security but the other half you've been working as a desk officer somewhere else so they will take into account instead of I've been doing this for three for four years okay they will EPSO will consider that you've been working in ICT security for two years it's half of it half of the time you've been working in something that fully matched the profile so 50 percent two years they will do that with the, the explanations and with the information you provide. They will select these different elements. So um, after that, this, please slip to replies. It's important again, it's very important that you fill in the, the whole application. And after you leave it for one night, 
And the next day you review again, you read everything because there is a lot of typo, things that you miss, things that you didn't realize that are still there. They're lurking behind the, the text waiting for you to, to be sent and realize that, oh, I made a mistake. No, let's avoid it. Let's slip over our replies. Let's uh, give them some time to review with fresh eyes, with fresh mind and check them. That's very important. That's very important. So, hmm, what else do we have? Well, in application, this is a typical standard form for the education, but also it goes for the working experience where you go, the dates, the types on a, on a different menu where you select and the description that you do from the different elements. So it takes time. It takes time to fill in. I mean, don't think that this can be done in five minutes. So, and provide all the relevant details. Imagine that you have studied a superior, in, you got um, engineering studies in a polytechnic university, four years degree. Um, then you describe your studies, the content. Well, in your studies, perhaps you, do, you did plenty of subjects or courses but I'm sure that there will be some training, some courses, some topics that are more relevant than others regarding the profile or the, the content of this competition. So just yes, write them. Don't, in this case, you could sacrifice some of the details just to focus on the relevant ones. Um, be smart. When filling in the application, try to fill in with the relevant details and don't consider that they are obvious. Oh, of course, I study uh, informatics, I study engineering in the polytechnics. So it's obvious that I study this kind of mathematics. I, or it's obvious that I study this kind of technology. Yes, for you, maybe it's obvious. Maybe in your country, it's, it happens so. But think about someone who is reading your application uh, who has never, never uh, um, known what are, what are the contents of the studies of engineering studies in your country or in the university where you study. Will this person know what you're referring? Will this person have a taste on the real detail of your engineering studies? Probably not. So remember that what have always try to read your application or write it to be read it by someone who doesn't know you, who, uh, who doesn't know anything about your country, your studies, your background, anything. So with your application, they can know everything they need. That's the goal. That's a good application. Remember to save it uh, once in a while. You've got 60 minutes uh, until the, um, the system shuts down itself. So to save it uh, before that, so it's not a problem, but in case you you for, you forget, <laughs> then the uh, questions of motivation I mentioned them before: the interest to apply, contribution to the EU strengths. I think that they deserve a good answer because they will help us to understand better the whole process and how the things are done and what they are looking for. So, give them some thoughts. It will help you to to put you in the mood and in the line to reply. Uh, this application. Then the profile itself, professional experience and all the different elements. So put all your experience there. Of course, if you've been doing, let's imagine, very small jobs for a period of time. So in my first year of work, I work in 10 different companies because I was contracted. I was working for a big engineering profile or big engineering company. And I was sent to, to different companies. Well, I tried to uh, group them, to engulf them. I mean, it makes no sense of writing uh, 20 different entries. Okay, yes, be smart on that part. I see the chat, maybe there's another question. Should the percentage of the talent screen request match 100% for the same company? If the experience for this company appears in several answer or talent screener, well, Regarding the percentage, yes, I, I sorry, I didn't mention them. Uh, they should be current within its side. So for your application, for your CV, that should be more or less current. Check that part as well. After you have finalized your application, check that everything match. But between the application and the talent, 
can be some small discrepancies. Yes, I mean, not a big deal because in principle, they won't check one from the other. They will read only the talent. They won't read at all the CV. Okay, so um, they are co compl treated completely separately. So in, um, one problem that sometimes has been real in some candidates, they forgot this part. They didn't pay attention to that part and they made reference or they leave it or they thought they could leave blank some part in the talent because ah, I already explained my CV. No, that's the thing that we cannot. So CV application in general must be coherent. All the different elements should be add up to 100%. And in the talent, again, that should be consistent, the different questions. But if there are small discrepancies between the talent and the CV, it's not a problem. Sometimes because of the structure of the explanation, the information, there are discrepancies. Provided they are small, that's fine. What will be a big discrepancy will be, for instance, that you say in your CV that you study philosophy and then in the talent you say that you study engineering. Say, okay, wait a minute here. This is something that doesn't match at all. So those are the elements that we cannot afford. So, uh, uh, Inigo, sorry, but my question is more for the talent. So, for example, if I want to give my experience in a company for the question one, I cannot say that I was performing this experience 100% and later in the question to say also 100% is need to be uh, inside of the talent screener. Uh, yeah. Well, in the talent screener, just the, I make reference to the percentage, but it's not so relevant. Uh, it's more, um, let's say more quantitative than qualitative sometimes, the dancers in the talent. So, um, I mean, you can repeat the experience, you can explain from the perspective that you need on each question, provided that uh, you don't claim something that is inconsistent in the sense that, first question, I was working 100% the whole day doing this task in particular. And then in the next question, you say exactly the same sentence, but for the second task, then they will realize something is wrong, but you say, no, well, doing my regular job, in this company, I was perform among others, or I was performing this task. Point. What is true? You don't specify what percentage. And the next one, I was performing this task for the second question. That's fine. So this is a consistency in the overall application. Uh, at the end, it's very difficult to split them apart I mean, because sometimes in our jobs we do well. This month I've been doing only this task because there was an emergency, but the next month I've been doing well half of the time this other task, um, the other half of the time a different, completely different task. So we need to adapt to, uh, to the reality, provided there's a clear explanation in both of them. And um, I saw in the chat another question. So the explanation in CV and talent skills can be repeated? Yes, it's not that they can, they must if the question deserve it. If they're asking for the same experience, yes, you repeat it. What about motivation and work experience? Can we repeat text there? Um, motivation usually won't be needed to be repeated, those questions within the rest of the application. That part, we can leave it up, uh, behind. But regarding work experience, yes, there will be part of the work experience or the elements that you're covering in your CV that you will need to reflect in the talent screener. Yes, it's how it works. Talent screener is one application, CV is another application. Deal with them as if they were two different applications for the same position. Um, don't think that they will cross check, they won't, um, they are co uh, two completely separated silos that are delivered in the same document and in the same application. That's how you need to deal with them. So that's regarding the interface. And what else do we have? Well, the languages is important. Remember that you need a, a, a language number one, it's minimum C1 level and language two, minimum B2, if I remember correctly, if I'm mixing with other notice that it was uh, C2, C1. Um, it's important that 
the minimum requirement of the language must be in all the entries, in the ability to listen, ability to read, ability to speak, and ability to write. If you make the joke of, imagine, me, I'm Spanish, so I put Spanish. Uh, ability to listen, proficient, uh, proficient user, C2. Ability to read, proficient user, C2. Ability to, sp to speak, ah, uh, well, I don't speak so well Spanish, so I will put ha, 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 B1. And Spanish is my language number two, and they're asking me for a C1. And I put ability to speak, just like joke, B1. The machine, it won't be even the, the board, it won't be EPSO itself, but it will be the machine will uh, put me away. It will, it will disqualify me automatically the moment I send my application. And when the process is closed, they will, I will get an email like, congratulations, you've been disqualified. You don't, you don't match the criteria. So be careful with this type of things. Just be sure that you put the minimum of your real level that is above the minimum required. That's it. Silly mistake. Yes, but sometimes it has happened to some candidates. That's why we're insisting. Because it's a pity to spend a lot of time, a lot of effort, just for nothing because of such silly thing. Mm -hmm. Well, then we we'll mark the fields marking with asterisk compulsory just to confirm that we've we fulfilled all the criteria so no the eligibilities. Yes. And uh, a language degree is required. No, it's not required. I remind you that ironically, the single pro selection process that requires a language degree at this day in the institutions, in the European institutions, is to be a blue book. To be a training on that one, you really need or you require to you are required to present some kind of justif uh, justification. While for being an officer in the institution, you don't need a document. You just need to pass the competition. As the competition is done, part of it in the working language, English or French. If you are capable of passing these exams you are supposed to be capable of uh, working in the institutions. So they don't care about having a piece of paper saying what is your level of the language. No, it's a bit ironical regarding the, the, the trainee and the officers, but how it works. So, okay, we see that the, this part, we will click yes, yes, yes to everything. And then we will confirm eligibility and next. When we confirm eligibility and we next we send the application, we'll be asked, uh, uh, I think, twi even twice if we want to deliver our application. So please don't tell me that, oh, no, it was a mistake. The system clicked by itself. No, it's twice and you need to put your password before sending it. So be careful. Mm -hmm. Um... Sorry, uh, let me read one moment. Uh, Galia comment. There was uh, there was this competition that I totally had the relevant work experience, and I have also presented my duties in a very similar way to how they were described in the notice of competition. Yet the selection board decided I was not eligible for the competition. What could uh, the reason for that? Uh, if you were not eligible, I my understanding from that is that, that they claim that you didn't have enough working experience to fill in the criteria. Uh, I would need to see the right word, the, the, the word that you use and the criteria required to see how much, what was the percentage, so the total match between your profile and the requirements of the competition to understand better EPSO decision. Sometimes it's something that for us is perfectly clear and for EPSO it's not perfectly clear. So, for instance, another real case, a candidate who sent the application, um, most of uh, the professional experience of this candidate was in one single company. So, uh, the candidate put, uh, the, I was working in this company for X years doing this task, blah, blah, blah. But the fact is that the company got a quite misleading name. It was a name that you couldn't associate with the area of work of that competition. And the candidate didn't wrote in the application at any stand or at any moment, what was the real work of the company or clarify what was his real duty. When I say real, what was 
the candidate doing within the company itself. So the candidate got disqualified. Why? Because I mean, I'm the assessor. I took the application and I read a uh, company name that doesn't match at all the idea of work of the competition. Um, no further explanations. Even if you are fitting in your application, the duties, let's say, of the notice of competition, there was no other explanation. So I was missing data to really be sure that the work experience matched my expectations of as an assessor to allow you to give you access to the next step. And then the, the candidate got disqualified. That was a real case what happened. So could it be this case that we missed so, to explain something that, I mean, for the candidate it was pretty obvious, but what uh, he did in the company and what was the company about? Yes, because he has been many years there, but for the reader, no, it wasn't. Could be this the case? I'm saying this because it's one of the most common mistakes that we do as candidates to omit information because we give it for granted. It's, it's plenty, uh, clearly obvious. I mean, I've been working in this company 10 years, so of course uh, they do this. But I haven't been there 10 years, so I have no clue what you have been doing. So tell me, that's important. Okay. So, Hope I managed to, to answer your question. Let's move on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one moment. Well, uh, first, I, I will answer your question now. But read everything, please, 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 please. EPSO has one good thing and one bad thing. They are quite stubborn and they, uh, they follow the rules. They, they got the procedures, they got the notice of competition, they got everything there. So word by word, so read them, read all the information because it will be always very useful to all of you to, to read it. It's quite, quite clear at the end. If you read, you have the patience to read everything. Usually we don't have it. And that's one thing. And regarding your question um, on if most of your experience is a free, as a freelance, are there any problems? In principle, no. You will have to explain, first of all, and then when you are required to send the documentation to prove your work experience, check on the notice of competition in the Annex 3 in your notice, because the structure is a bit different from the regular one, I think it's the Annex 3 or Annex 2, uh, where they explain what documents, what information you can provide to justify that work experience when they leave in the, the documents that justify your your, your application. That's it. That's the only difference regarding a person who has been employed in a big company that they present the contract and that's it. In your case, you have to present different documents, but that's all. No, no problem. Or shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so we need to unlock our application. We need to do it fine. So quality work is the key. And it's how we will get unlocking and look or pass to the access uh, to the assessment, not to access. Um, remember that we want you. you no, know, that, that's key before we enter into deep into the talent screener. That's very important. So um, these two paragraphs, these two texts are extracted from the notice of competition. I just invite you to check in the notice of competition where is that part written. Uh, only the black letters are ours, just for the purpose of look at them better. But for the rest, it's exactly copy paste. We embed anything. So remember, the selection board will perform a competitive assessment of the merits of all the eligible candidates based on their answers in the talent screener section. Talent screener section, no CB. Nothing else, talent screener section of the application form. Okay. Uh, the recorded session will be uploaded in YouTube, my, by the way, in our YouTube channel. And yes, we will start the, um, the PowerPoint afterwards. Mm, we got the answer on the chat, uh, the question on the chat. And then regarding the, the second paragraph, the candidates must include all the relevant information in their answers in the talent screener section. You see, the questions you were asking me before, 
I answer already them and I insist in a game. Yes, I'm, I insist always on the same things a lot of times. Yes, why? Because the candidates, we keep making the same mistakes and we shouldn't. Now it's time to learn from our mistakes and improve our application. That's our goal, right? Uh, Oscar, no, in fact, they cannot disqualify you for bad motivation, but the, for instance, if you leave empty that part, they could disqualify you because part of the application is not uh, fulfilled, it's not complete. So, I mean, you can spend a few minutes answering that part. So make a try, make a good try on that. So candidates must include all the relevant information in their answers in the talent screen or section. And only the text filled in by the candidate in the appropriate fields in reply to the talent screen request will be taken into account. Nothing else. No UCB, no links to external web pages that will be disregarded. A reference to documents that will be not taken into account. Only the text that you wrote that is limited. You get a limited number of characters in your application, in your talent to fill in, that's it, that's all. So that's why you need to write, read, redraft, read, redraft, write, redraft, right? Many times. There's no application or talent that can be done right in one day or one afternoon. No, it's not feasible. I mean, it's not, it's not possible. This is in the notice of competition. Please check it, check, go for it. I mean, all this information is there. So, expect that we need to take into account. Professional experience, facts, not opinions. Be smart, choose your best examples. If you need to deliver examples, if you need to deliver concrete information, now is the time to choose the, the good ones. I mean, EPSA is asking for re factual and real information from facts, but it's not asking for the whole information. You know, otherwise, you won't have enough space to, to answer all these aspects. So, be smart, select the best one. No, because my first example was this, but this is the best one. No, probably the most significant one was five years later. Get the significant one, not the earliest one. Sleep on your replies again, and time to see who is a good friend. And when I'm saying this, it's always because, please eh, take a friend, a family, a relative, enemy, whoever you prefer, and give this person your application, please, my friend. My beloved husband, my beloved wife, check my application, find the mistakes, find the errors. Hey, okay, you got here a typo, this sentence I cannot understand, this is not clear. <coughs> All these elements, always a uh, good pair of fresh eyes can help us to spot them in our application. So that's why it's very important to say who is a good friend and has time to read our application. In detail, always, always very useful, very, very useful. So um, remember that on the talent screen as well, regarding the language and, and everything, you get these warnings, uh, how are compulsory, right? And to answer, to give the answers, all the information is there. I mean, we are not inventing anything. Maybe they have edited a little bit because this is from a previous competition, but still you got all the information there. Uh, if you've tried to answer the talent without selecting the language too, they will inform you, okay, stop, stop, stop. You need to select the language, then fill in. So they can detect the language and they can inform you if you are applying in the right language or not. <coughs> we have selected English. So then we are told to, okay, remember you have to answer in English, blah, blah, blah. All this is information that appears in your application. It's information that is visible. Don't ignore it, read it, be careful. Because still, so once in a while, candidates make mistakes. And um, imagine a candidate when it got quite clear in front of uh, him or her that they were so supposed to fill in in English, and they fill in in French or in Spanish or in Hungarian or in Polish. So imagine if we can do such silly mistake because we didn't pay attention to something that is obvious. Me? Obvious that is in front of us. Imagine the small mistakes in our explanation, in our application. No, no, I explain everything about my past, about my experience working in that company. And then a second reading, but late of the, um, of the answer, maybe can show us that we didn't explain at all. It was not clear or the name of the company was not clear or whatever. So be careful. 
there is a lot of information that we need to put in your application. It requires time and it, would, it requires a lot of revisions or reviews of it. So, and now what to answer? Now we are going deep into the talent. As I told you before, we are going field by field, but from both profiles, ADE and AST at the same time. Because, I mean, I took the first uh, profile, infrastructure, cloud, it's a bit longer, but anyway, you, you will know what I mean. I put in red, let's say, the part that is proper of the AD, professional experience in designing, no? right? Well, if you go to the AST application, you will find exactly the same sentence, but with a different starting. Assisting, professional experience in assisting, in the areas of implementing, blah, blah, blah. So at the end, the task, the core tasks are the same, but the focus, the way we address this task is different. So please remember that part if you're applying to the two profiles or if you want to apply to one to another, what is the logic that you need to follow while explaining your answers? Mm, it will feel in, in French. Can we still use English for technical words or are we only really supposed to translate everything? Um, software logical, for instance, software, I, I suggest you to translate it to, to logical. Proper names, um, I will, you could leave it uh, untranslated, I mean, no, no need. Um, for the acronyms, careful with acronyms. In fact, it's something that is, is coming later. I mean, if you can avoid it, don't use acronyms. I mean, uh, uh, and if you, use, uh, if you use acronyms, use them in a consistent manner. I mean, the acronyms that you use in your application, remember to re-explain again in your talent screen if you are using them again. Don't go, ah, no, I explained this acronym in my CV. Yes, but this is the talent. So they won't remember, they won't know. So, and also remember that the acronyms, maybe they mean different from you that for the reader. So that's why it's so important to explain the acronyms if we are going to use them because they are quite a common in our text. Okay. Uh, and David, is possible to apply to a different role? Yes, I say that right at the beginning, it's possible to apply to the AD and the AST at the same time. You can apply to the two of them, but you cannot, I mean, the system won't allow you to apply to the two profiles on AD, AD level or to profiles in the AST, you cannot do that. And if you create two accounts to do that, uh, you will, if detected by the system, by EPSO, you will be expelled from, from, the both, from both profiles, from the competition, and probably you will be banned uh, of the EPSO competition. So just remember the part. Read careful the notice of competition. Read, it's, it's written there. They say clearly that you cannot apply to more than one profile per competition, AD, or AST, but you can apply to one AD and one AST. Um, and we got other questions. I mean, all these are, I extracted from the notice of competition where we got the uh, talent screener questions. And there we see that all of them are common. I just had to cut some of the questions because there were too many and they, they couldn't fit in on the screen. It, it's quite messy. It just, go to the notice or to the template of, of your application, you got all of them there. Um, let me see on the chat. Uh, okay. Um, for instance, there are some expression, careful with this expression that I clearly intended for one profile to the other. In red AD, in managing service contracts, managing service contracts, that is a higher task. That's typical for an, for an AD. But in the AST profile, you got the equivalent, the translation for AST profile, assisting in managing service in one or multiple areas of data centers. You see how they adapt a little bit the task uh, or the questions. They are, they're asking in the talent and that's it. For the rest, it's very similar, if not exactly the same items that we're asking about. And I think in some of the profiles for AD are less questions than in the AST. But it's, a, um, it's a matter of splitting them or adding a few considerations. But, um, the core aspects are all the same on its field, whether it's AST or AD. Uh, so just input, always real experience. Please don't, 
don't use the, the space you got to provide a lot of blah, blah, blah. No, be concrete activities, equipment use, ROM use or hardware or different tools. I mean, you don't need to be become technical in your explanation, do it because the one, the person who's going to read it should be a person with certain knowledge of the area that you are talking about. Okay. Um, so don't be afraid of that. Don't sacrifice. No, I'm not going to refer to my experience in emerging technologies because it's too complicated. No, 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 no. Just the contrary. Prove that you are a good expert by explaining it in a short, concise manner even if you need to use some keywords or technical words that are not very common. So all these elements are important in your application. And all of them filling in based on the duties as well. If you need some inspiration on what to explain, how to explain it, take the duties, the other annex, the annex one of the competition to answer this question, to get inspiration, the different elements. Okay. For instance, here I got the um, the uh, 80, 87 fields. So we see that how all these duties are described, and they, they say so. For instance, in design, architecture, integration, implementation, physical and virtual components, network and telecommunication services, network application security services. You see all the different elements that oh, I think the firewall or balance, uh, balancing, reverse proxy, proxy domain. I think that rather technical, they are not uh, very common words, but maybe. Um, so you can use that level of language, you can bring them into your application to show and to reflect and explain your experience. Okay, so these are the things that uh, we got as reference. Um, Luis is asking, so is it advice to optimize use numeration structure and answers? or rather stick to plain text? Well, it's true that the interface where we are answering our question, it doesn't allow us a, a big thing on editing the text. There's some, some limitation, but still, just think about, if you are an assessor, you are reading applications, right? You've already been working the whole day in applications. You have gone through 10, 12 applications that morning, and then, it's come the next application. And the candidate decide to answer the questions just with plain text, just with a big paragraph with full detail of what is his or her experience regarding the first question of the talent screener. Do you think that the person who is reading that paragraph will be able to, to read it? Will be able to keep the concentration after two or three lines? Oh, the person will be, get lost reading that part, especially if it's doing it on the screen, not doing it on a paper, but doing it on the screen. Will that person be really uh, capable of concentrating, appreciating what is right in there? Or if it's a big, uh, big paragraph, big chunk of paragraph? Personally, I don't think so. And so far, what I know from people is they don't, they cannot. So, but at points, yes, but provided they explain something. Please don't use valid points to put one word. You're using valid points or some kind of separation is to, to split the ideas. One paragraph, one idea. And one paragraph could be three lines, fine. Or two lines, well, fine as well, but not one word, because one word means, what does it mean? Okay. So um, it's important to give a structure, to give clarity. The first correction is visual. In the sense that they see your application, they say, okay, yeah, well, well, looks nice. Uh, what the, the text I got here, I see clarity there clearly that there are some different experiences of different jobs or different points to an answer, fine. Well, if I get a big text, I say, oh my goodness, maybe it's the best content, the best profile ever. But if it's all given like a single paragraph, they won't appreciate, they, they will get lost in the explanation. So that's why structure, uh, structure approach in your answers is needed and is required. And it's always much appreciated so they can have a full grasp of our, our, on our experience. And also it's helpful because it'll allow you to go more clear on the review process to check that you are not missing anything. So a structure is always a plus. 
that was for the field one, but what happened with the field two? Exactly the same thing. So in the field two, we got digital workplace. So we got professional experience or in assisting in the same areas in the definition of business and security needs, blah, blah, blah. all these elements, prototyping, deploying, experience in managing the evolution of services to adapt to new businesses, uh, experience in the maintenance, certification in projects and or in service management methodology. These elements this question are, are common, but uh, we saw that there are a few, a couple of questions that are different. Well, not different, but are exclusively exclusive of the AST profile. Are the, the, these two that are marked just below the AST? Professional experience in coordinating organization prioritization, reporting and supervising the activities on service desk and the administration of the ATS, it's life cycle management for the digital workplace. I guess this is the type of that are more AST file assistance, not high strategy, high planning, but more hands on approach. That's why ASTV profiles got these two questions. Those are elements different. But again, compare the two notice, check them, and you will see the difference between one and another in case you want to apply to both of them. But I said before, real experience, be concrete, use duties vocabulary. I mean, the, the, uh, I cannot give you better advice because we know that it's work. Um, people don't think, no, this is a shortcut, this is a strategy that will allow me to get into the assessment without paying any price easily. No, I mean, at the end, it's effort, it's uh, work, const uh, being constant, that it will pay off, it will allow us to, to get things done and allow us the access to the assessment. What about the fields four for AD level and for th field three for the AST profile? Data management, data analytics. In this case, there were a few more differences. Professional experience in assisting, in the case of AST, but same questions. Um, for instance, in one of the points, in assisting, in the case of AST, managing and maintaining uh, IT application and of, of, this, uh, of the self solutions. In the case of AD, uh, managing should be in red as well, in managing and maintaining IT profile. And then you've got one question that it was exclusively for ADs, professional experience in developing models and algorithms, while uh, the, the one below in green, professional experience in providing user support, help desk, and in running IT service. This question, you see it's quite in line with the previous one we saw. This is very AST profile, or is the task in the sense of assistance, hand on, when more big development, the developments, for, for the ADs. At the end, the justification for this mostly that the ADs are supposed to be people with uh, superior studies and engineering, while is deep, we are, they are not, they don't need such uh, fulfill such requirement. That's it, not a big difference. So no offense for anyone, just tax orientation that we are, they are defining through these questions. So be a great answer then in detail. What else do we have? We got a, fire, a field number five and for ADs and four for AST, ICT security. Professional experience or in assisting in the, in the case of assistance, design analysis, technical legal drafting, implementation, ICT security. The other question that we can find is, uh, as far as I remember, they were exactly the same or almost the same. We merged a little bit in some of them, but I mean, evaluation and proposing new IT security products, periodic security assessment, professional or, or academic experience in artificial intelligence application for IT security. In fact, this is one was common for the two profiles. So, I mean, you see at the end, the tasks are the most relevant thing. It's only the way we explain this task that change from one profile to another. Okay. From an application perspective, I know that the 87 profile, a, the salary should be around 6,000 euros per month. And in the case of AST4 profile, I think it's around 4,000 something, doesn't get into 5,000 if I'm not correct. Yeah. So that's another painful difference, but that's it. Um, yeah. I, mean, I guess if there's any ICT security expert in the room, well, you know better than me how to explain all these elements to cover it through your experience in the answers. Explain detail, detail by detail. I mean, don't don't answer big 
blocks, answer line by line, point by point, ideas, separate, if it's relevant, put it apart. And also the visual correction matters. And last but not least, the last field, the field number three, AD, IT and data governance. Here, uh, it's only for ADs. This one, there's no ST profile, and we see that how the wording of the questions of the talent, they become even more AD style. When they say IT strategy and or IT governance, management of projects and service, that's the typical task for an AD rather than an ST. Definition and implementation of IT policies and strategies, state of the art solutions and technologies, and uh, elaboration validation of enterprise architecture products. So all these elements like sounds a bit high in that sense. And those are the elements that we need to reflect in our application in the talent screener, but as well in a different format, in a different type, but the same information in our CB. Okay, this, uh, these elements. Well, you also got the percentage, the, the task percentage in the, in the application for the CV. That's, uh, that's an experiment that is running uh, at this moment. It doesn't matter so much uh, at this point, but eventually probably they will adopt the system to select automatically the, uh, the length of the work experience. But at this moment, they, they are not doing. And also in the end of the your notice of competition, in both cases, you got an explanation of how that is done, how they consider those percentages and how you get into the talent screen and that part more in detail. So you can go to, to that point to read carefully. It's interesting in any case. Um, and what else? What else do we need? Uh, we need to unlock the next level, the final level of our application before we end our game. Uh, here, I already mentioned several times and I insist in a game many more times, please. Not for making more complex, giving a lot of strange details, your application is better. No, it's by explaining things in a simple manner that your application is better. The biggest experts, the biggest, let's say genius, there are those who know how to explain these things simple. Complexity is not an added value when we need to show our experience or knowledge or capacities. It's simplicity, what gives us the real strength in our application to, to get it through. Okay. Um, please retain this element, it's important. Um, okay. So regarding the writing, some tips that maybe are obvious, maybe, maybe you knew them, maybe, but still they work well, they work quite well, but when sending an application, first of all, don't write too long sentences. An average sentence is 15, 20 words, maximum 25 words, whatever is possible. Um, this goes especially for those who are coming from Latin languages, my fellow beloved Spaniards, because we have tendency to put a lot of sentences in one, inside of one sentence, the subject, um, the subjective sentence, uh, so, so, uh, subordinate sentence, no subjective, subordinate sentences, that's something that our language allows us to do, but in English, it doesn't sound so right, or it's not so good, so avoid it. It's better to cut by commas, by points, and to split, make small cuts, no, to write very long sentences. Limit yourself to one idea, main idea, input per sentence. Yeah, I mean, sometimes we lose notion, we try to put everything one in a few lines and we are missing the point. We are missing the opportunity of explaining clearly and showing off better what we can deliver. You were asking about before about ballot points. Yes, it's possible to create list uh, if a space allow it, depends on how much information you need to put, but avoid the big block of test. And also please, when I say bullet points, is bullet points with ideas, with sentences. Don't use bullet points for one word. That's not. Don't bar key information or key messages in the middle of the sentence. Um, uh, that's the part that we don't read. It's on human nature when you read a paragraph that you will pay more attention to the beginning and the end. If it's a short paragraph, yes, you will see it. But if it's a paragraph of more than four lines, I will, I will dare to say that there's a high chances that we don't pay so much attention to the middle part. We read the first and the, and the last part for sure. So key ideas at the beginning or at the end. 
not in the middle. Avoid it. Um, practice, practice uh, drafting, writing. That's why we need to start today or tomorrow uh, drafting your application. Otherwise, it will be a mess. Anyway, try to do this in one, in one afternoon. Uh, jargon, be very careful because your jargon maybe is not the same as the assessor jargon. It's not the same. No, but we are working all in the same sector. Yes, yes, but for example, in the European institutions, you see that, well, every, everybody is working in a public administration, the public administration sector, so the jargon should be the same for all. Well, it depends. I mean, from one office to another, from one floor to another, the jargon, the keywords that they use are completely different, or even they use the same words or the same jargon, the same acronyms, but with a different meaning. Let's be sure that you explain the, uh, the acronyms if you need to use them, or the keywords if they are not universal keywords. Um, that's important. Again, insisting on check the, the quality of your answers. Check that they can be understood by someone who has no idea what is the text about. Um, someone that is not reading the application because he or she has to, like an assessor, or because, no, and someone who just takes your text, okay, I'm reading the sentence, I may understand for what you wrote is the following. It's what you intended to say, yes, no, if it's no, oh, wait, let's, let's check, I did something wrong, okay? Careful with false friends, because here, sometimes in a short sentence, the, the wrong word can be very painful. It could be misleading, could be hinder our communication capacities or the information we want to deliver. So careful with that. And use available resources. And when I say that, I say I already offered you some references of previous competitions. Check them, what happened with them, the, the wording that they use, how things have changed. Uh, they go to the web pages of the European institutions, check on the IT policies, IT capabilities of the institutions to see what's going on, to complete the duties and the tasks mentioned in the notice to provide them with more detail on what is the element that you su you're supposed or you should put in your application pre uh, with preference, right? Okay, I got experience with 20 different softwares. To say something. And I check on Google and I see that in the commission they use preferably five of them. Okay, I will write that I got experience in these five languages or these five different softwares that are the more relevant for someone who is working already in the institutions and is looking for that kind of knowledge, that kind of experience. What's the point of just listing the 20? No, I say I have a work in 20 different languages among others or mostly and the five relevant, five relevant ones. For instance, so use available resources, play smart. There's no secret. There's a lot of information is available around us. It's all around. So read a little bit about it, but also don't get lost. Just looking for a lot of information. I mean, just a few hints that will help you to focalize and to improve the quality of your information delivered in your application. So that's it. Again, practice, write a lot. It's helpful, very helpful. Um, only your work matters. I mean, only the dedication, the time you give to the application will help you to, to get it done. There's no other secret. There's no shortcuts. Unfortunately, we haven't found any, honestly. Um, yeah, that's it. Came over for the moment. That's it for today. Just one small reminder, and I will be open for your questions. Remember that in Yesemos Europeos, we can help you with CBT trainings. That is part of your assessment at the end. Training for the assessment center, well, that's sure. All the tests that you may have in the assessment, competence-based interview, field-related interview, written test, a case study, situational competency-based interview, all of them, we, uh, we are more than capable of helping you. To, to pass them, already did in several competitions with uh, good success. Uh, coaching activities as well, cast interview preparation as well, or an application review, in case you're very interested, we have that service as well. So just a small add at the end, allow us the, that small element. And of course, now it's your turn. Please, questions, comments.
or everything is very clear and you don't need more questions, more comments. Please go ahead. Hey, hi, Inigo. This is... adelante, que nos hemos ido a la vez. Tranquilo. Okay. En, en español, Inigo, puedo... Uh, go ahead, you can ask ¿Sí? in Spanish, I okay. will translate the question then. Ok, perfecto. Eh, bueno, está resuelta, ¿no? Es, simplemente eh, registré mis aplicaciones, ¿no? Tanto a ST eh, como a D. Eh, mi duda era si podía aplicar a las dos y veo que sí en las respuestas, ¿no? Eh, con lo cual está resuelto. Vaya, me refiero, son perfiles distintos, evidentemente. Uh -huh. Y, bueno, pues esa parte está resuelta, con lo cual eh, feliz, ¿no? De ver que puedo aplicar a las dos <ríe> oportunidades. I mean, regarding uh, the possibility of uh, sending an application to both HD and ID uh, competitions, look that they have two different numbers, two different codes for the competition. The moment they got two different codes, uh, the rule of up, uh, that you're entitled to apply to both of them mm -hmm. is allowed, is, is possible. When they share the code, the initial code for other competition, for instance, a, a AD profiles, they go, they serve the same number and they put an extra number, slash one, slash two, slash three for each one of the profiles. So it means that you can only apply once to one of the profiles, one of the uh, of them in the same codification. That's the trick. To Thank know. you. Thank you, Inigo. Very fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So next uh, was uh, who was the? Yes, can I... yes. yes, I would like to 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 make a question. So. Good evening. So uh, my question is, um, when the, all the, the, the uh, uh, posts are, re uh, are released in the EPSO website, so it's possible to, uh, uh, with one only one application, uh, it's possible uh, filling only one application to, to uh, uh, I don't know. So for, for each field, I would fill in one application or only one application uh, regardless uh, the, the different fields. I mean, uh, for example, field one, IT, field two, uh, I, I, I don't remember exactly, but field one, IT, field two, uh, governance, field mm -hmm. three, uh, security. It's, it's needed to fill in one application per field or not? No. No. No, I mean, you can only apply to one of the fields. So um, if you start to fill in the field one, number one, ICT infrastructure, cloud networks and middleware, the system won't allow you to, with your account, to fill, fill in the, the application for the field number two, three, four, or five. They will block you. They will, uh, in fact, they, they will tell you, you already have opened one field. Or, uh, or one application or an application one field you can you are not entitled to uh, to open a second application that's it okay and, um, so you you, it, you have to decide previously the field that you want to apply yes. but okay. but careful imagine that you start to fill in field number five ict security and you realize oh no at the end i'm realizing that uh, my profile my experience fits better with field number four design and development configuration data management, right? So what you can do is you can delete your application. You can delete your ICT security application uh -huh. and open a different field and then open oh. a new one. But you need to okay. delete, delete first the previous one in case you are not oh. sure. But my tip of advice, don't do that. I mean, it's better if you just go directly for the one that you think that you can do better, yes. you can perform or you have more experience. So check them before you got all the, experience, all the requirements in the notice. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Just, just a question for me, if I may, please. Go ahead. Um, is regarding um, your services. So, what do we have to do if we want to um, like get your services or hire you for some of the services you were sharing with me? Uh, we service? will when we send the uh, the links uh, to the video recording and the presentation. We will share, share with you the, the information how to require our services, whether it's the CVT, the uh, the, the uh, application review, or the assessment trainings. All that we will share with you the the links to the forms to 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 get them to to ask for them. So 
Also, if you need to do it uh, right now, let's say, you can go to a web page to Yesemos Europeos and you have them in, uh, listed. And, and how, how does it work? So it's like you have an interview session with us or, and then we can tell you um, okay, where we are and then you provide us to like uh, some Depend advice about mm -hmm. what we need or is like we, we get what we want? Mm. To a certain extent, you get what you want, in the sense oh, that well, uh, <laughs> yes, but one uh, thing is what we want, and the other one is what we need. So yeah, no, I mean, um, depends on your competition, your situation. Let's say that uh, uh, this competition is move ahead in a few months' time, and you are already in the assessment. So we will talk, and we, I will inform you about the different trainings that we got for each one of the tests in your assessment to prepare it so but there are some candidates who decide that they only need training or helping one of the tests of the assessment but not for the others that's perfectly fine others who want to train all the te all the different tests with us um, that's why we have different sessions uh, in the case of imagine that you require our help or assistance uh, tomorrow for the application uh, then just contact us we talk and we can set the um, the date for, for the application review to check uh, on, on your documents and to provide you, you some some help or some assistance in the application process. That, that depends. We are always open to that. I mean, uh, not a big deal. And also, you can always contact us by email if you want, if you have any doubts. So send us your question and we can reply back to with our best advice regarding it. Thank you very much for your answer and for your time as well today and for the presentation. My pleasure. Yes, hope it was useful for all of you. I don't know if there is any other question left. Yes. Yes, go uh, ahead. Thank you for your presentation. Um, once, you're, once you can you achieve to pass the talent experience, uh, could you explain uh, what kind of, of test uh, you have to to do and in which way uh, you can help us? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, regarding the, uh, the test that you will have, it's described in the notice of competition. If you allow me, um, mm -hmm, I will stop sharing it and I will go to a different place. That it's the, um, oh no, not this part. So one moment. Um. <laughs> I guess. Well, let me share back now the screen. Now you're seeing my screen, right? Yes. And you see that we publish in our blog uh, the, uh, this analysis of the, your notice of competition. So there where we describe all the different elements of the notice and particularly we can go to the part when we describe the assessment that is here. Here we got that in the HTTP profile, you got the case study, the situation and competence-based interview, and also the field-related interview. So you got three tests. In our case, from the SEMOS Europeans, we can help you with the three of these tests. We, uh, with the case studies, a, a classic exam on competencies, or writing test. Mm, usually it's 90 minutes or 120 minutes regarding mm -hmm. a topic that is not related at all with the IT world. It will be whatever topic because only about competencies in general. And the situational competency-based interview, it's based on a fictitious scenario where you have to describe what would you do to different questions that you will be asked by the assessors. And in the case of the field-related interview, it's about, it's a kind of talent screener, but oral. They will ask you about your experience, your knowledge, your capacities in the field of expertise. But please remember this is about the, you know how, your capacities to do things. It's not, okay, define me the codification of this program, write it down, uh, all the code. No, that's not the kind of question. The kind of question is, okay, you have, when, tell us about the problem you got in ICT security. What, what did you do? How did you did it? All these elements. So these are the typical tests that we see. 
Uh, we help you on it's one of our sessions through practice because at the end is the method that works it's how we help people to to get it done and to get into the reserve list and that's for the ST profile but if you can go to the AD file um, that we got here the, the analysis in the other post of the of the blog and um, it's exactly the same test with the one single difference in the AD profile, they got leadership competency, while in the ST profiles, they don't have leadership. So it's seven competencies for ADs, seven, uh, sorry, eight competencies for ADs, seven competencies for AST. That's the single difference. For the tests are exactly the same, and the style and the preparation is exactly the same. And we can help you, of course, for all of them. Okay, so there is an interview. And two tests. Um, well, the situational competency-based interview is in the form of a kind of interview as well. Uh, so let's say there are two kind of interviews and one writing test. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. More questions, more comments? No? Okay. So, sorry, I, it took a bit longer than expected because, well, it was a long notice what it got in our hands this time. I mean, five profiles in AD, four profiles in AST. And I think they deserved a whole review of it. So, um, hope you found this presentation useful. It will be uploaded in our YouTube channel. We'll send you the link as well to download the presentation. <clears throat> Afterwards, um, of course, so we will send you the links so, to all the information we got available for you. Uh, hope to see you soon in the assessment preparation to all of you. Okay. See Thank you then. Thank you very much. And have a good Thank evening, you. Bye. Okay. Thank, Thank you for the nice presentation. Bye. 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 Bye.